Hi guys, welcome to Beam Learning for you. Today I'm going to show you a presentation on introduction to Revit part 1 which was created by Beam Learning for you team. Well, Beam Building Information Modeling. Beam is an intelligent 3D model based process that equips architecture, engineering and construction professionals with the insight and tools to more efficiently plan design, construct and manage buildings and infrastructure. BIM for MEP engineering helps mechanical, electrical and plumbing engineers keep design data coordinated, minimize errors and experience enhanced collaboration with engineering and architecture teams. Let's have a look on the basics, exploring the user interface, application menu. The application menu provides access to common file actions such as new, open and save. It also allows you to manage files using more advanced tools such as explode and publish. Quick access toolbar. The quick access toolbar contains a set of default tools. You can customize this toolbar to display the tools that you use most often. Well, this is the customization box. You can add any tool into the quick toolbar by clicking on add the quick toolbar menu. You can adjust while using this quick access toolbar like as I shown on the video you can see clearly you can move you can move up you can move down you can delete it. Well. Regarding Info Center, Info Center is a feature used in several Autodesk products. It is consists of a set of tools of the right side of the title bar that enable you to access many product related information sources. Depending on the Autodesk product and the configuration, these tools might differ. For example, in some products, the Info Center toolbar may also include a sign in button for Auto 3D 360 services or a link to Autodesk Exchange. Well, Properties Palette. The Properties Palette is a modelless dialog where you can view and modify the parameters that define the properties of elements in Revit. When you start Revit for the first time, the Properties Palette is open and docked above the project browser on the left side of the drawing area. If you subsequently close the Properties Palette, you can reopen it using any of the following methods. Click Modify tab and then properties panel and click on the properties tab. Click view tab and then windows panel and then click on user interface which drop downs and show you the option you can tick properties. Well right click in the drawing area and click properties. You can dock the palette to either side of the rivet window and resize it horizontally. You can resize it both horizontally and vertically. When it is undocked the display and location of the palette will persist from one session to the next for the same user. For more information on changing the size and position of the properties palette, see Dockable Windows. Search Dockable Windows in the Info Center which was located in the right side top of the rivet. Well, you can see now I am showing you how to open the properties palette if it is closed. This is the first option. Let's close it and let's open through the second option, view, user interface and properties tab. Well, let's close it and now the second, third option, browser and properties. Now, let us discuss the important points or important things we need to know about the properties tab. Type selector. When a tool for placing elements is active, or elements of a same type are selected in the drawing area, the type selector displays at the top of the properties palette. It identifies the currently selected family type and provides a drop down from which you can select a different type. The right side image shows clearly about the type selector what I have discussed. Well, point two, properties filter. 
Immediately below the type selector is a filter that identifies the category of an element a tool will place or the category and number of elements selected in the drawing area. If multiple categories or types are selected, only the instance properties common to all display on the palette. When multiple categories are selected, use the filters drop down to view only the properties for a specific category or for the view itself. Selecting a specific category does not affect the overall selection set. The right side image shows you clearly what I have discussed till now. Well, the third point is edit type properties. Unless elements of different types are selected, the edit type button accesses a dialog where you can view and modify the type properties of the selected element. The edit type button on the palette, however, accesses type properties for the entity whose instance properties are currently displayed, which could be either the active view, the active tool or a currently selected element type. Well, the fourth point instance properties. In most cases, the properties palette displays both user editable and read only instance properties. A property may be read only because its value is calculated or assigned automatically by the software or because it depends on the setting of another property. For example, a wall's unconnected height property is only editable if the value of its top constraint property is unconnected. For specific dependencies, see the instant properties description for individual element types such as wall instant properties. Take a note, when you select the top node in the project browser views or an individual family type, the properties palette displays the associated read-only type parameters. Well, now let's discuss about the project browser. Project browser shows a logical view for all views, schedules, sheets, families, groups and other part of the current project. As you expand and collapse each branch, lower level items display. You can search for entries in the project browser browser using the search in project browser dialog. Right click in the project browser and select search to open this dialog. Now let's discuss about the status bar. The status bar is located along the bottom of the application window. When you are using a tool, the left side of the status bar provides tips or hints on what to do. And when on selection, the status bar displays the name of the family and type. Now let's see what else the status bar contains. Worksets, editing requests, design options, select links, select underlay elements, select pin elements and filter these are the important things we need to notice on a status bar let's go for the view control bar the view control bar is located at the bottom of the view window above the status bar it provides quick access to functions that affect the current view includes the following scale detail level visual style sun path to on or off to on or off shadows crop you, show crop region, temporary hide or isolate, reveal hidden elements, work sharing display, temporary view template, analytical model visibility and highlight displacement set. Well, if you have any questions, please comment below. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel.